Assalamualaikum and good day. Today, I would like to talk about literature review. So, please read my notes. You have to download the notes from the island. And please find research methodology book for your own reading and references. So, bila kita sebut pasal research ni, research ni adalah proses. So, you need to understand the process so that you can work on your topic independently. So, macam valuer kan, dia nak buat penilaian. So, bila dia nak buat penilaian or they want to do valuation, of course, they cannot just straight away do the report. They have to do, they have to collect the information, uh, the data. So, maknanya dia melalui satu proses tu. Maknanya proses to collect information and you know, you dapat uh, instruction from the bank. So, bank kata, oh, kena value rumah ni. So, the rumah tu you imagine is your case study and the client, alright, the owner, the banker, they, these are all your respondents. So, maknanya you nak kedapatkan maklumat daripada mereka and then you have to do the title search and from the title search, you have to inspect the property and you have to come back, you have to compute in the analysis and you generate the um, the, the value. So, begitulah juga dalam kita buat research ni. So, maknanya di, kita kena melalui satu proses. Ya, proses tu lah yang kita tulis dan jadikan dalam satu laporan iaitu yang kamu buat sekarang ini dinamakan sebagai final year project. So, why you find it difficult? Uh, because you have to work independently. Uh, tu yang pertama. And then lagi satu, you need to give uh, yourself time to read. We have uh, the technology. So, technology make our life easier. So, the information is so easy to get these days. So, but how easy you obtain the information, uh, you still need to put the idea in place. So, meaning that you need to write, you need to put the idea in the writing. So, this information and idea are scattered. You have to 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 put it nicely so that the idea is connected to each other a good writer he or she will write a good uh, story so imagine uh, if you don't discipline yourself so maknanya you nak buat last minute so tak boleh because this process require time benda yang baik kita nak dapat benda yang baik dia memerlukan masa you really have to discipline yourself. Uh, please, you have to uh, design your own uh, gun chart by referring uh, the dates um, given by your PTA um, coordinator. So, these are the process that I'm talking about. So, literature review um, ni is, is one of the chapter in your final year project. So, in, in, in writing your final year project, you have one good chapter. Uh, we call it as literature review. Once your proposal is accepted, later you, you will have to convert this um, proposal into your chapter 1. So, literature ni, like I said just now, dia juga uh, melalui satu proses. So, meaning that literature ni is not just you put the definition of your subject area. It, it is not just you reporting uh, people's uh, idea or people's work. Uh, literature, it should be very comprehensive a uh, comprehensive story about your topic theoretically uh, a very comprehensive summary that related to your study so literature should consist of uh, various published and unpublished material related to your topic so dalam literature yang you tulis tu it must be a combination of information on the theory on the the method on the analysis so bila you tulis literature you need to write uh, what have been done already in the area of your study or your interest and what remain to be done. So, dalam literature ni is, is a process. I'm talking about a process to find other work related to your proposed topic or your idea. Dalam literature ni, dia tak boleh based on your personal opinion. So, they must be based on the statement that you need to justify. So, maknanya statement uh, that you need to justify uh, by on your argument. So, therefore, when you do literature, you kena bagi credit dekat orang yang you ambil dia punya sumber tu. So, you give credit to the author. So, by citing uh, the published work. Alright, because whatever you take this information, you, you kena harga ilah, you kena gak, kasih kredit dekat orang yang uh, tulis tu, then you put in your uh, in in your own writing. Dalam literature, uh, you need to explain on 
how your study tu differ from the earlier study and how the earlier study tu it could be similar to your study in what sense dalam literature ni bila you tulis literature ni so how will your proposed study contribute to the current state of knowledge that is important literature in chapter 2 tu is a summary of your LR that you have read and is related to your project. Chapter 2 tu, your literature review is a discussion of paper and you need to identify which paper that is important to your topic. Maknanya, kalau you baca, uh, you, you cannot expect that if you read 10, all these 10 are important to your topic. So, mungkin you baca dalam 15 Daripada 15 tu mungkin ada 3, 4, 5 artikel saja yang boleh guna pakai. So you tak boleh kata oh I'm just wasting my time. No. So dalam literature ni dia memang perlukan masa. Dia memang perlukan uh, you punya concentration. You have to read, you have to revise and you have to put uh, your idea into the place. Why? Why you need to write chapter 2 kan? So, you pun fikir, oh kenapa nak kena buat uh, chapter 2 tu? The main reason to have literature because you want to put your work into the perspective. So, you want to demonstrate the familiarity of the body of knowledge with the established uh, uh, and credible previous study yang you dah baca tu. So, you will need to write. Uh, you, you need to do the mind mapping. You need to do a uh, metric table uh, to summarize your work. So, metric table yang saya masukkan ni, so bila you baca, so, you need to also have a, a proper process. So, maknanya bila kita baca, kita tak boleh just baca dan tinggal fikir dekat uh, kepala kita. Tak boleh. What we need to do? So, kita kena buat satu jadual yang kita panggil metric table ni. Consist of the author name, title, year, um, uh, what is the research approach, design, respondent, which you you think this is important uh, for you to use in your study. Meaning that, you dah summary kan dalam, dalam, dalam metric table ni. So, bila you dah letak, katalah you dah baca 15 articles eh ataupun 20 of course you will see the pattern you will see the idea so it will bring the clarity and focus to your problem statement all right by doing a literature uh, review so at the end of the day you will identify the gap in the current knowledge gap ni maksudnya jurang kajian so maknanya you tahu dah kenapa you nak buat topik ni dan apa yang you perlu uh, buat uh, berbanding dengan apa yang telah orang buat okay while you are at home uh, explore the library website dalam tu macam-macam you boleh uh, dapatkan the online data database to find articles, conference proceeding, journal, textbook, thesis professional journal it is what you need, you need to give yourself time to do your searching and also non-electronic electronic media so I know, I think um we have to give farewell to the non-electric media because most of us, uh, mostly we rely so much on the internet, even not all document uh, you can access through the internet. What are the main information that should be in the literature? So first is the theory lah. So the def definition, what are the theory, uh, the research design, research finding, research method, data analysis and the main variable yang you think uh, you boleh guna untuk you punya uh, kajian dan apa yang orang telah guna. Kenapa ada literature? So firstly, you, you need to have a literature because you want to identify uh, on the theoretical development of the topic that you want to study what are the new approach then you want to compare uh, what have others done and then what you need to be done so you need to identify methods orang uh, kajian ni orang guna method apa kenapa dia guna method tu Right, benda-benda ni you have to uh, question yourself and then you ask yourself ok then kalau orang ni guna method ni orang ni guna method ni then saya nak guna method apa you need to identify uh, variable that is relevant to your study. So, banyak banyak variable, banyak sub-variable, banyak attribute. But, what is is relevant to your study? Apa yang you nak guna? Kenapa you nak guna? All this need a justification. So, you, you need to obtain ideas on how to analyze the data. So, walaupun dalam literature, you belum start lagi buat you punya data analysis. Dalam literature, you boleh 
uh, tunjukkan apa kajian yang terdahulu pernah orang buat dan bagaimana dia uh, menganalisa data tu. Dari satu daripada situ kita boleh dapat idea dan kita boleh tengok uh, dia punya kronologi tu dan proses tu. Pelajar tanya macam mana nak tulis literature kan? So literature ni kita tulis uh, dia ada penceritaan dia, dia ada gaya cerita dia. So kalau novel dia bebas kan, dia ada konsep dia bebas ikut pada kreativiti seseorang. Tetapi dalam uh, literature ni dia ada beberapa cara yang you boleh guna pakai untuk you tulis. Yang pertama you boleh uh, mungkin you boleh clusterkan uh, dalam bentuk topik-topik ataupun kita panggil uh, pattern uh, mengikut topik ataupun you boleh explain uh, from the general to specific uh, ni saya ambil dalam buku research lah uh, contoh general to specific maksudnya you mula-mula cerita uh, teori secara umum dulu iaitu contoh theory of organization then daripada situ you kecikkan balik communication in organization email in communication relationship in email and communication then sebenarnya you nak buat kajian tentang language in email so ni contoh Contoh saya bagi eh uh, Ataupun you boleh uh, Menulis you punya literature Dalam bentuk historical pattern Ataupun you boleh uh, Buat comparison, contoh comparison Teori A, teori B, teori C Oh saya nak buat teori A campur teori B Contoh Apakah garis panduan Untuk you menulis literature review Nak cakap pasal garis panduan ni uh, You have to Go back to the first one, you kena baca dulu kalau you tak baca, apa jenis panduan yang baik pun, you tak boleh nak tulis. Read and reread all the sources. And then you have to arrange your material into the topical groups. Uh, like I mentioned just now, you kena buat metric table kan. So dalam metric table tu, you dah summary kan author mana, mana yang penting, mana yang tak penting, mana yang you nak buang dan sebagainya. Dan you ambil mana yang penting tu to, uh, to put in your... Uh, Subtopic Then you have to paraphrase So maknanya contoh You ambil daripada artikel A You tak boleh ambil bulat-bulat daripada artikel A You have to rephrase You have to paraphrase All um, You know the information Instead the, rather than you just do a quotation And of course bila you tulis yeah, You mesti ada tajuk dan dan tajuk kecil, tajuk besar So penyusunan tu sangat penting So masa you baca tu Uh, you know, you buat summary uh, You kena buat mind mapping So, barulah you akan susun tajuk itu Supaya dia nampak cantik eh? And uh, each topic yang you buat Contohlah kan you buat uh, heading 1, heading 2 So, each topic it must be interlinked to each other Jangan topik atas you cerita benda lain Topik bawah tiba-tiba you cari benda lain So, benda ni selalu saya nampak eh? Bila saya baca, atas tu sangat cantik Dia punya bahasa, dia penulisan dia Tetapi, when it comes to the second paragraph Uh, lain pula uh, tu masalahnya bila you tend to copy and paste so please 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 try to write um, on your own I know writing is not easy but you have to help yourself uh, to write and from there then you can improve your writing insyaAllah uh, saya sendiri akui menulis tu bukanlah senang tetapi kita kena belajar Alright, sebab menulis itu adalah satu skill yang you perlu ada eh. sebab sebagai seorang profesional you kena satu skill yang you kena ada you mesti boleh dan mahir untuk menulis laporan eh. so laporan uh, ni kita kena tulis dengan gaya bahasa kita kita tak boleh macam laporan pun kita nak kena ada ada apa tu sama eh tak, setiap orang dia mempunyai gaya bahasa dia, gaya penulisan dia Yang itulah yang you kena um, polish eh? So maknanya bila you tulis ni, you kena rancang apa yang you nak tulis You tak boleh, oh hari ni saya nak tulis tu, tak boleh You kena rancang dulu apa yang you nak tulis You kena buat magic table macam saya mention tadi You kena baca buku, you kena give yourself time to to write, put your some notes Buat satu ledger, tulis dalam tu Then you start to write Uh, so write, writing ni bukan semestinya hari ni you kena tulis uh, uh, Start daripada A Tak boleh eh Writing is very complex So uh, you have to start Whether you you you, you, do, you like it or not You have to start somewhere Writing So writing is a process also So after you write you need to revise 
eh you kena baca eh you kena baca tengok balik then you have to rewrite balik you have to edit then you have to rewrite balik and you have to revise balik proses ni akan berulang 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 dan berulang you tak boleh expect oh hari ni saya tulis besok saya nak hantar dia akan jadi kualiti dia takkan cantik lah so sebab you nak bentuk diri you sebagai seorang profesional so you have to give yourself time to write to read alright to revise and to rewrite so sebab aspect of writing ni dia bukan hanya setakat you perlu menulis uh, you perlu adakan you perlu ada content saya nak buat video ni pun bukan senang saya kena dapatkan idea nak cakap apa so content tu kena ada The idea must be there And then you need to organize the idea You tak boleh macam uh, Kejap cakap topik ni Kejap cakap topik ni So you need to organize the idea You need to express your idea Alright So maksudnya Bila you uh, dapat uh, Satu pembacaan kan You kata okay this author is good Then you say oh you want to put in your writing So you need to have like um, Argument or maybe some uh, Suggestion uh, Or you give some uh, comment to that particular uh, references yang you you rujuk tu your expression of the idea is important and you kena jaga uh, your grammar your vocabulary and also you have to look at the formatting eh? yang ni selalu ramai pelajar yang tak ambil kisah so your grammar your vocabulary your formatting tu is important walaupun markah dia tak banyak mungkin dalam 5 ke 10% tetapi dia memberi kesan kepada mereka yang baca di laporan kita bila saya bercakap tentang academic writing, of course uh, kita banyak uh, merujuk pada artikel orang, alright? So why you need to cite all these sources? Because you hargai uh, kerja orang, eh? so you tak boleh ambil kerja orang dan you put in your report and you claim that is as yours. So you need you need to put the citation so you need to provide the documentary evidence so maknanya that's why you need to cite alright there are a system uh, in order for you to make the citation sekarang ni dah dah modern eh dulu kita buat manually sekarang kita ada and not application we have the mendeley in order to organize our references so, please like i said in my first lecture tadi saya cakap what you need to go to the library website you can download the software but you must have your password and ID lah so if you are registered student then you can get it for uh, free uh, bila kita guna orang punya kita kena give a credit to him or her penulisan kan dalam literature tu uh, you buat satu general statement then you ada specific detail your argument so dalam specific detail tu of course lah you need to justify with the fact with the statistic, with the definition, with the example, explanation, comparison. So, all this, you kena dapatkan maklumat kan? So, maklumat ni lah, you kena buat citation. You tak boleh kata, okay, pada tahun 2018, statistik uh, telah meningkat kepada sekian-sekian. Tetapi, you tak bagi tahu from where you get that statistic. You need to justify. Uh, that is what I meant. So, ada dua tempat yang you need to acknowledge eh? uh, the, the the references sources ni. Yang pertama is in your uh, writing text. Dan yang kedua, bila you dah siap menulis at the end, at the back of your uh, report tu, dia ada list of references and bibliography. It's a list of reading and it's a list of references that you use for for you to write that report. So, macam mana nak buat citation eh? Macam mana nak buat citation? So, saya dah cakap tadi, pergi dekat library, download the software, then belajar macam mana you nak dapatkan artikel ni. You dah dapat artikel. Contoh, you dapat artikel dalam bentuk PDF dan you nak masukkan dekat dalam your uh, referencing system ni. So, you you need to find out apa yang you nak guna pakai. You nak guna Mendeley ataupun you nak guna, hmm, lagi satu apa? EndNote. Uh, you have to choose. Life is all about choice. You choose. Alright? And you have to be consistent lah. Uh, you tak boleh nak... Kejap-kejap you nak guna Mendeley. Kejap-kejap you nak guna EndNote. So, you have to be consistent. You guna satu sistem saja. So, you cite 
any source of idea, quotation, whatever you have paraphrased in your writing. Every time you use some of someone else's work, macam contoh idea, table, diagram, metric, uh, chart dan sebagainya, benda ni you you must give a credit to the author. Alright, kalau you buat buku contoh kan, uh, orang ambil idea you tapi dia tak give credit to you, apa you rasa? Mesti you rasa, eh, tak boleh macam ni kan? Uh, Okay, kita dah nak sampai ke penghujung rancangan ni In order for you to do your thinking eh Kalau you tengok saja video saya You dengar, you takkan uh, nampak kan uh, You kena buat, you kena practice So first thing what you need to do Please go to the library uh, UITM website So please download the uh, referencing system EndNote, ada EndNote referencing system kat situ You download, try to explore the system Saya nak you plan and structure your research work. So, pertama sekali tadi, eh, you kena dapatkan artikel dulu. Eh. Bila dapat artikel, you masukkan dalam you punya metric table. Eh, ni proses saya cakap. Eh. How you want to plan and structure your research work. So, you masuk dalam metric table. You buat satu, uh, you know, summary. Eh. You you map map it out. Alright, then you kena uh, belajarlah macam mana kita nak letak heading, subheading, heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, heading 4, maksimum pun sampai heading 4 lah. So that one you boleh tengok dalam you punya word document eh. And then you need to use the uh, referencing, menggunakan you punya EndNote referencing tu. Um, then uh, you can start to uh, read, find articles and try masukkan dekat dalam referencing system. So with that, uh, ada apa lagi? Hmm, saya rasa tak ada. Okay, uh, tolong buat uh, latihan yang saya uh, bagi tu. Uh, I hope you are okay. Sekiranya anda ada masalah, uh, boleh WhatsApp saya ataupun uh, hubungi uh, pegawai perpustakaan sekiranya anda mengalami masalah untuk download dan sebagainya. With that, thank you very much and Assalamualaikum.